Hello everyone and a warm welcome to today's episode where we have a beautiful story very close to my heart. As I was a kid I used to love this story. It's called The Wild Swans and is written by Hans Christian Andersen, the same author that has written The Little Mermaid. So here goes. In a faraway kingdom there lived a widowed king who had 11 sons and one beautiful daughter called Eliza. The sons were beautiful, strong and mighty and the girl was as beautiful as she was good and a kind soul. And one day the widowed king decides to remarry and he remarries a wicked queen that was in fact a witch. The evil queen wastes no time and, out of spite, she turns the eleven stepsons into white swans and casts them away. They are allowed to become human only at night. She also convinces the king to send Eliza away to live with some servants, away from the castle. Days have passed and Eliza is now 15. She is a beautiful young lady. The queen tries to bewitch her too, but Eliza's goodness is too strong. The queen has her banished though. She makes Eliza unrecognizable by rubbing on her face, neck and beautiful hair some evil ointment, so the king cannot recognize her. Only the watchdog can recognize her and the swallows, but they are humble creatures and cannot talk. Poor Eliza cried and thought of her brothers who, like her, were banished out in the world. Heavy-hearted, she ran away from the castle until she reached a vast forest. She had no idea where to turn. All she felt was sorrow and longing to be with her brothers. Like herself, out in the world, she set her heart to find them. As she wandered deep into the woods, she met an old woman who was in fact a good fairy and she told Eliza that she has seen 11 swans who wore crowns on their heads and they were not too far from that spot. Eliza didn't waste any time and ran to find the white swans. She had a wild guess that those swans are in fact her brothers, her long lost brothers. The princess finds her brothers and at the sunset they turn into humans, they talk, they hug, they cry, they tell stories and finally they decide to live together to a faraway kingdom as beautiful as their own native kingdom was. The eleven swan brothers carry Eliza in a net over the vast ocean and at sunset they arrive in the new kingdom. There Eliza is guided by the queen of the fairies to gather stinging nettles from graveyards to knit into shirts that will eventually help her brothers regain their human shape. But in order for her brothers to be healed from this evil curse, she would have to be silent from the moment she takes this incitement until she finishes or else her brothers would die. Eliza endures painfully blistered hands from the nettle stinging, but she is for the first time full of hope and happy because she knows that soon her brothers will be free of this horrible curse. During this time, the king, the handsome king of those parts, happens to come across Eliza, who cannot talk, and he falls in love with her, and she likes him too. He grants her a room in his castle where she continues her knitting. Eventually he proposes her to be his wife and she accepts. However, the archbishop of those parts is angry because he suspects that Eliza is a witch because of the nettles of the shirts she was waving and he tries to prevent the king, but the king doesn't believe him because Eliza was just too beautiful. 
One night though, Eliza runs out of the nettles and she is forced to collect more in the nearby church graveyard. Well, this time the Archbishop was watching her. That the fact that he saw her in the graveyard strengthens his idea and he runs fast to the king to report the incident that Eliza is in fact an evil witch. During this time, statues of saints shake their heads in protest, but the archbishop misinterprets this sign as a confirmation of Eliza's guilt. He orders Eliza put on trial for witchcraft. She can speak no word in her defense and she is sentenced to death by burning at stake. The brothers discover Eliza's difficult situation and try to warn the king, but they cannot because remember they are in human form until the rising of the sun. Even as the wagon bears Eliza away to the execution site, she continues knitting, determined to carry out until the last moment of her life. This enrages the people who are at the brink of snatching and ripping the shirts into pieces when the white swans descend and rescue Eliza. The people interpret this as a sign from heaven that Eliza is in fact innocent, but the executioner still prepares for the burning. When Eliza throws the shirts over the swans, her brothers return to their human form, finally. The youngest brother, though, remains with the swan's wing instead of an arm, as Eliza did not have time to finish one sleeve for his shirt. Eliza is now free to speak, but faints from exhaustion. Eliza's brothers are there now and can explain for her. And as they do, the firewood around Eliza's stake miraculously takes root and bursts into flowers. The king plucks the topmost flower and places it on Eliza's chest. She is revived. Nothing now stands in the way of the happiness and Eliza can marry the king and they lived happily ever after. This was the story of the White Swans. I hope you liked it. It was a story about love, resilience, and most of all about the mistakes that we have made as human during our history, when we burned a lot of men and women for witchcraft, supposedly. We have to remember our mistakes learn from them, become wiser, hopefully. Again, if you have any story that you like and you want me to share it with everyone, please send it to jucariepentrutine at yahoo.com. So, the mail is email it at jucariepentrutine at yahoo.com. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.